I'm Deborah Navarro, and I'm a founder of AirLev. And I'm here to talk to you about my own journey in pursuing air levitation-based transport, a journey that unknowingly started when I was a kid and stemmed from my desire for connection. I grew up in a small border town of 3,000 people, hours and hours away from any major city. For 17 years, I never left this state. And for 17 years, I didn't have internet, so my world was just this small town bubble that I lived in. And I was able to find inspiration in books and in sci-fi. And through that, I could imagine a world that was far greater. And with all of this in mind, I started to develop mindfulness, even though I didn't know what the words for that were at the time. And I promised myself that if I ever had the opportunity to work on something that was far greater, I would seize it so that others like me would know more opportunity, know more connectedness, and be able to make a much better use of their time. And so I journeyed out to the University of Texas, where I studied sciences. And before graduating, I began a master's in technology commercialization, because I believed that no matter what you work on in the lab, it holds no significance if it's not reaching the hands of people. And during this period, I began fascinated with transportation. And I found that it had been over 100 years and we still use the same major four modes to move. And there's so many inefficiencies with every mode of transportation. For one, cars. We accept today that every 24 seconds, somebody will die in a car accident. And trains do well at moving people, but they rely on government subsidies to continue to operate. They're not sustainable yet. And planes are awful in terms of CO2 emissions. They release tons and tons of CO2 into the atmosphere each year. And transportation is the second leading cause of CO2 emissions. And every year, there are billions and billions of CO2 emissions that are recorded. I envisioned, at the time, a new form of transportation in which it would be autonomous, it would be sustainable, and it would allow you to have freedom so that you could use your commute in order to contribute to things that you cared about, like reading, writing, or simply just being present. And I argue that mindfully designed transportation systems would make us more mindful as a result. And the reality is, is that you will spend hundreds of hours each year on the road. And those hours will translate into weeks and months and ultimately years of your life that you'll never get back. And so I found this group of like-minded people in college who are also passionate about transportation, and we formed a research group at the University of Texas, and we built an air levitation-based vehicle for the Hyperloop. So what is the Hyperloop? The Hyperloop is the proposed fifth mode of transportation. It takes key elements of boats, planes, trains, and cars. It's not this idea that's completely out of thin air. Essentially, you're creating this levitating vehicle that travels through a system of tubes that are above or below ground, connecting major cities, allowing you to get from New York to Boston or LA to San Francisco in just 35 minutes. And the reason why this system works so well is because you're removing the air resistance from the tube. So by removing so much of it, you're able to travel really rapidly in it with not much energy, so you're able to make it 14 times more efficient. So the Hyperloop would allow you to work anywhere, to live anywhere, and to be anywhere. And I was personally um, influenced by this and excited about this when I first heard of it through the white paper that Elon Musk released while I was still an undergrad. And it detailed how the Hyperloop could potentially be built suddenly the United States seemed so much smaller, and there was like a map where every single major city was connected. And the Hyperloop would be at the speed of a plane and the convenience of a train, so you could get anywhere for the ticket cost of about $20. This research group that I had formed, called Guadalupe, really inspired AirLev, the reason why I'm here today. And we decided to, to dive in and, and build this vehicle. We all had this common passion for 
pushing forward transportation. And we went with this really alternative form of transport that had never been proven, and it was unknown. There's no commercial system right now that you could access where you can travel using air levitation. Um, magnetic levitation is much more popular. And that is the system that we were competing against, essentially. So we built this test track at the University of Texas. And our test track uh, actually was, was very challenging to build, especially in the Texas heat. We literally shed black sweat and tears to make that track happen. So that's our air levitation-based vehicle. And we found out that we made it as a top 20 team across the world for the Hyperloop. And this is us in, in, at the SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition inside of the actual Hyperloop chamber levitating. So what's significant about this is at the touch of a button, our system is turning on. And so we're lifting hundreds of pounds using air. And what that means is that one day we'll be able to take this, because this is a scalable system, it can lift thousands of pounds currently. And it's designed so that once it's built out in a full scale, it could transport such heavy loads of people and goods. And another thing that's significant about what's occurring here is that we're controlling this autonomously at the touch of a button remotely, which means that this system can be scalable in an autonomous way. And we didn't go out to SpaceX to win awards, but we did. And so out of thousands of teams that applied, not only were we a top 20 team in the world, but we were given the first innovation award for the air levitation systems in which we built. And it was an incredible moment for our team. After Elon Musk spoke, Steve Davis, his VP, came out and recognized us. He had been working with us every single day. And he saw us and our passion firsthand. And this gave us momentum to really push forward and we had a lot of the press all across the world, which was great. And it really inspired us to form Airlev. And Airlev is a company based on researchers from MIT and the University of Texas, who've all come together. And we've built these air levitation systems that could be used for hybrid vehicles, or they could be used in the present to move goods. And our long-term vision is having these Hyperloop stations that we could access. And I think about how life would have been if I was a kid and I could board onto a Hyperloop station and suddenly be taken to a metropolitan area far, far away. Imagine all of the opportunity that that would unlock. And what's so important to me is we're also inspiring and empowering other engineers. So we've created these Hyperloop hubs at the University of Texas and at MIT. These students are using AirLev's air levitation systems for the latest Hyperloop vehicle that they're building. And I'm proud to say that they are in our shoes, and they're currently in the final round for the Hyperloop pod competition that's taking place this summer. And they project to go speeds of up to 200 miles an hour using air levitation, something that seemed impossible for the Hyperloop a few years ago. And they're being empowered to be better engineers as well. So what is inspiring about all of this to me? What challenges me to keep going? Well, I think of the leaps that great inventors like the Wright brothers took in order for us to build the transportation systems that we have today. The Wright brothers literally went on flights and broke limbs in order to prove that flying was possible when the world said that it was impossible. You can't really imagine a world without transportation. But transportation affects us in infinite ways. For one, think about dating, even. It used to be that you could only date people that you could reach on your legs. And then horses came around, and you could gallop to your loved one. And so now we have planes and cars, and we could get everywhere, and we could kind of maintain relationships with our family and loved ones far away, but we still have a lot of room for growth. So maybe if the Hyperloop existed now, long-distance relationships could actually work for a change. <laughs> there were air pressure-based systems underground in New York City in 1800s which blew us away. So 
there was this system, this pneumatic system, where people were moved in capsules to and from their subway destination using air pressure alone. 400,000 rides were shuttled in its first year of operation. And there was also the French aero train that existed 100 years later. And this hover train inspired other hover trains to be built all across the world. And the reason why these systems aren't available today is because they hit a wall with politics. They hit a wall with money. And they didn't fail because their technology wasn't where it needed to be. And so we face similar barriers. I think that one of the hardest things is you know, trying to, to gather support and to make people buy into something that's so, so out there. But I, I can't imagine what the world would be like if we didn't have another revolution in transportation. And I'm happy to say that we've had some governmental support recently. Elaine Chow last month at South by Southwest, where I was also privileged to speak, announced a new division of transportation dedicated to the Hyperloop. And what this means is now we have a lot more of a public structure to build off of, which is so key if we want to get this done. I found in this journey that our work is transferable, whether or not we have a full-scale commercial hyperloop system one day. So we could use air levitation in the present. Um, we don't need to function inside of a hyperloop um, in order to move containers. We can use it to reduce friction with existing rail systems. And we could also be used with other hyperloop companies who are pursuing magnetic base levitation to make a dual system that would make it much smoother and much more energy efficient. The one takeaway that I want everyone here to, to get is to make bigger choices. Every day I wake up and I try to push forward this idea that billionaires can't do. And the reason I do it is because I realize that the choices that we make shape who we are. And the choices that we make don't just shape us, but they shape the greater world around us. We are a walking, living, breathing version of our choices. And I could either choose to imagine what it would be like to chase and pursue my wildest dreams, or I could actually pursue them. And so I challenge you to do the same, to take a leap into the unknown. Thank you.